Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. I'm in conversation with Larry Wilkerson. Larry is the former chief of staff for the U.S. Secretary of State, Colin Powell. He's currently an adjunct professor of government at the College of William and Mary and a regular contributor to The Real News Network. Thank you again for joining me, Larry. Good to be here, Sharp. Larry, towards the end of this week, we are going to be having another Summit of the Americas taking place in Panama City. For the first time, Cuba will be participating uh, in this conference, largely because at the sixth summit, most of the uh, uh, countries uh, indicated that they would not be attending the seventh summit if Cuba was not present. So Cuba is going to be present for the first time. What does this mean? I think it's a, a good move for U.S. policy in Latin America. I think it's an excellent move for Cuba, although I did encounter some uh, opposition amongst what you might call hard right wingers in Havana. Yes, they have them too. Um, and I think generally speaking for the hemisphere, it, it's a positive development. Eliminating people from the table where problems and challenges that confront us all are to be dealt with and solutions are to be carved out. Um, it's not the right way to go about things. I, I don't care what kind of government exists within that particular country or countries. So this is a good thing for the hemisphere, for Latin America, and particularly, I think, for the United States and its position within the hemisphere. Now, what happened last time during the summit uh, is a very important and significant uh, thing where most countries said, unless Cuba's at the table, uh, we will not be attending. And this was seen as an effort uh, by the ALBA countries, another trade formation that has evolved in Latin America, led by uh, or initiated by Venezuela. Now, uh, the U.S. policy towards uh, Latin America has uh, wavered a bit since that summit, and they have taken this position to re-embrace diplomatic relations with Cuba. Do you think that meeting, last meeting of the summit, had any significance on uh, the rapprochement with Cuba? I think it was a, 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 a pressure point, to be sure. Um, I don't think it was the pivot point or the decider, uh, but I do think it was a pressure point. Um, I think the overwhelming pressure on the administration to have a better relationship with Cuba was simply brought about by the weight of 50 years of failed policy, along with the reality of such geostrategic factors as China's influence in Cuba, particularly around the development of what could be the largest and busiest intrapo in the Western Hemisphere, the port of Mariel. It's so geo, uh, politically, geostrategically significant in that sense, ultimately, economic and financial sense, um, to the fact that almost every other country in the world is in Cuba, so to speak. Uh, the only country that isn't that's isolated in that respect is the United States. The, all, of these, all of these things, the weight of the failure of the policy, the weight of current geostrategic and geopolitical realities, um, the lack of attention to the hemisphere, the fact that anyone codifying U.S. policy in Latin America would say, OK, there's hatred for the drugs in Colombia, there's hatred for Venezuela, and there's hatred for Cuba. What else is there? Um, at least now. We'll all be meeting and we'll all be talking and we'll all be discussing, as I said before, the real problems that confront us that we all have to meet. And we can't be meeting them individually or unilaterally. We've got to work together. Now, Larry, uh, Cuba is in a strange predicament here while the uh, relations with the United States is still tender. Uh, and yet we have... Um, President Correa in Ecuador, who's, uh, who is not attending the uh, summit, as he has already indicated that the, um, this is some sort of a protest uh, on the part of Ecuador uh, in terms of the, the uh, aggression that the U.S. still has in Latin America, and particularly in relation to Venezuela as a... As a can, you, can you blame Ecuador? I mean, how on earth could anybody stand up and without laughing themselves to death, declare Venezuela as a national security threat to the United States? I mean, just ask yourself that question and try not to die laughing yourself. 
Uh, and, we're, and President Maduro has indicated that he's going to be arriving at the summit with some 10 million signatures opposing United States um, uh, aggressions in Latin America and opposing this particular measure in terms of declaring Venezuela a national security threat. Um, uh, how do you think uh, President Obama is going to respond to this? Oh, I hope he gets an earful. <laughs> I really do. Um, I'm convinced that in many respects, issues like this, especially what you might call second and third tier issues, don't get through to the president of the United States because members of the National Security Council staff and in a larger field of the cabinet, particularly people in the Western Hemisphere Bureau and State Department in similar uh, enclaves in the Pentagon and so forth, don't really get their point of view, the expert point of view, through to the president. What gets through to him is the political and intelligence point of view, and that's not always the smart point of view, especially with regard to diplomatic relations. So, you know, I'm not trying to let the president off the hook here, but I'm quite convinced in this particular issue that, as I was before with Cuba, that he wasn't getting the full story and might not even be getting the full story now. So again, he may get an earful when he gets to uh, La Ciudad Panama, Panama City. Larry, thank you so much for joining us. Surely, thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.